Hello, welcome to the newsletter. In this particular newsletter, I'll be talking to you about this particular painting called Chinese Horse, which is actually uh, from the Lascaux Caves in uh, France. So this is the actual image. And before I show you the painting and discuss the painting itself, I'll tell you a little bit about Paleolithic art, okay? Um, it is art that was done about 20 to 25,000 years ago and radiocarbon dating uh, is what sort of gives us the hint that that's roughly the dates that these um, images were created in. So there are, of course a lot of these images are in caves, but there are some in open air sites, but they, some of the paintings of course have disintegrated quite a bit due to weathering and erosion and that sort of thing. The amazing thing about Paleolithic art is that it was done a lot without any particular lighting. Uh, when it was done with lighting, it was mostly torches and grease lamps that were used. And the reason why we know this is because there were charcoal marks left on the walls and uh, on some of the um, images. Uh, during this time period. So the most, uh, let's say, popular um, uh, art form that was found during this, this time period were uh, paintings and engravings. So the paintings were mostly done with iron oxide, which gave you the red, uh, also known as hemat hematite, or uh, black pavement, which was charcoal or um, manganese diox di dioxine. So now the important thing here is that a lot of these drawings were um, used charcoal as a base. So the charcoal served as a pencil stump or that sort of thing or you could uh, use the charcoal with your finger or a brush. Now stump drawing is when you um, apply the paint and you spread it around with your hand or with some sort of hide. So that sort of can, you, can be used to create form or add volume or shading in a lot of the paintings. So um, in actual fact, these people were quite creative. So the other technique that was used is uh, wall spraying. So what they would do is they would uh, use their their spit unfortunately or fortunately and they would um, uh, subdue the the charcoal and then they maybe blow through a tube they would put their hand out and they would blow around it and so you got this great uh, image of your handprint if you wish and this was the beginning of what we call negative hand painting the second most popular technique used in Paleolithic uh, times were engravings, where you remove part of the rock hard surface with, uh, let's say if it's hard rock, you would use a flint blade or um, flint flakes. And that would give you really nice, fine detail. So um, the larger engravings, they used wood or wooden, the end of uh, wooden torches. Uh, to in, engrave with. Now there were some engravings done on the floor such as in a cave named Niao, again in France. Now the interesting thing of course with, uh, with what happens with engravings is that over time uh, you get all sorts of minerals and things that come down the, the, the walls and so the, we'll call it cave varnish happens and it happens over a long period of time. And then the imagery kind of gets uh, pushed back into the cave wall itself. So you, it's a little bit harder to distinguish. So um, great uh, techniques. And, and, you know, we're talking lots of time uh, has, uh, since, right? Before the present. This is the representation of the painting, of the same painting. And... I'll discuss this one in a little bit for you, but I did want to talk to you a little bit about um, this particular cave, the Chauvet Cave. Um, often what the, uh, 
the cave people did is they scraped the walls first before they painted and they outlined the animals that uh, to make them appear more silhouetted or or you know they also did um, spatial perspective especially on legs and, and, the, and the body itself so then they would use the uh, stump shading to give volume and form to the animal itself now this is uh, you know we're talking about for that era quite an advanced mode of, uh, of doing art so there were lots of techniques used and there were lots of themes and one of the more popular themes of course was the horse uh, other than that, it was a lot of abstracts and geometrics and very few humans, okay? Not many plants, trees, or anything like that, uh, bodies of water, and not any man-made structure at that point in time. However, they did do lots of dots and small bars. The animals they did represent were herbivores, mostly herbivores, and uh, you know bison that sort of thing and some of the animals that were not hunted were actually shown animals like rhinos and mammoths and bears and lions so um, when you think of it that far back this was pretty impressive so that's a little bit about the paleolithic art and now in particular um, this chinese horse okay now i created this this took a lot of coats so i have some matte medium on here i have some soft gel some light molding paste and um oh yes garnet gel which is difficult to come by i i had some leftovers so garnet unfortunately is no longer available for most of us and very uh, many layers of these different gels applied and dried and then basically the difficult part of representing this particular one was deciding did I want to have an image that popped out against this background or did I want it to sort of blend in a little bit like that um, engraving technique where over time the varnish um, gives you uh, the same color as the rock that is surrounding uh, everything. So I decided to do it more like a blending technique. And so this took a lot of uh, ink. <laughs> I have some ink, I have some acrylics, I have some pastels, I have some soft pastels. Um, so it's a lovely little piece. And um, I hope you guys really enjoy it.